Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our TypeScript series. In this video, we are going to talk about one more important concept that is called tuple. We will see the difference between tuple versus the array that we have created. So remember one thing that array we have discussed in the last session that arrays are always a dynamic in nature. It means at the runtime, dynamically, more and more values can be added. Okay. For example, let's see if I have created this array. This is a string array that I have created. And if I write names.push method, the testing will be added after Ravi. So dynamically, let's see more and more data is coming. I can easily add it and it will not give me any kind of error. Right. So arrays are always a dynamic in nature in TypeScript. But in the tuple, it is always a fixed size. Right. So here I'm writing the fixed size of data we can store it here how to declare in tuple generally tuple is a concept available in python also same thing we can use it here as well but here is a slightly different concept it's having the fixed size plus order matters remember this thing here order matters it means the uh, the sequence that they have defined for the type in the same sequence we have to define the data also here so let's see i'm going to create a simple tuple here okay so here I'm creating, let's see, one let person variable. And then here in tuple, just write two square, I mean, square bracket like this. And then you define that what type of data you really want to store. So here I'm writing that first type of data should be string, comma, number here like this. And then you equal. Now you have to maintain the sequence. It means now if you start giving the values, how many values we can give? Only two values we can give it. That's why. The size is fixed and in the same order, you have to give the data. It means first value should be string. So here I'm writing the first value. For example, let's see Naveen here and then some number that I'm writing. Let's see my ID is 100 here like this. So this is how that you have to declare a tuple. So for example, let's see again, I'm writing 200 here. It will start giving me the error. Why? Because we have given only two types here, a string comma number. It means in the same sequence, a string comma number, you can give it here. It's giving the error that a string number number is not assignable to the type of string number. It means I can have only two values, one string and one number. And that's it. After that, I cannot store it here. Can I add two strings here? Let's say I'm writing Ravi here. No, that is not allowed because the second value should be a number only. So that's what we have to remove this and we have to write a number only. But what if I really want to store three numbers or three values? Then in that case, you have to create one more here. For example, let's say I'm writing a Boolean here. Then I can say that, okay, let's see, this is my uh, user I have created. Now see, this is giving me the error. It says that you have declared a string number and the Boolean. And the, while giving the value, you have given the string, you have given the number, but where is the Boolean? So we have to give the Boolean value true. And now the error is gone from here like that. Okay, I hope this is clear. But in case of array, there is no restriction like that. You can give n number of values. You can add the values after push also with the push method. You can use it here like that. Now, how to fetch the value from the specific tuple? So you just simply say that, okay, let's see console dot out. And I'm writing, let's see, this is a person. And then here you can just give that this is available on the zeroth position. This is available on the first position. So let's see if I'm saying, tell me what is zero. And uh, what is one here? Same thing for the user. This is zero. This is one. And this is two here like that. So let's see if I'm going to run it and I'll do first, I'm going to compile it. So let's compile it with the TypeScript compiler. And then I'm writing tuple concept.ts. And uh, you can see tuple concept.ts is generated. And here it's maintaining actually kind of array internally in the form of JavaScript, right? So this is a, respective JavaScript that we have created. Now I'm going to do what I'm going to simple run it with the node. So let's run it with .js file and you can say Naveen and hundred getting printed on the console here like that. Okay. So this is how we can simple declare it. Now, um, can we declare a tuple with the arrays? Yes, that also we can do it. So what if let's say I really want to store multiple pairs. So see this, this is not allowed that Naveen comma hundred one pair that I have added, but let's see, I'm adding a one more pair here. So let's see 
another user is Ravi, comma user ID is 200. No, this is not allowed. Why? Because we have given only a string comma number. It means maximum only two values we can assign it here. But what if I really want to store one more value? Can we do something like this? Yes, we can do it. We can do in the form of arrays. Also, we can declare it here. So let's see. Let's see. I'm writing another. Let's see data once again. And then here I'm defining that the first pair, I mean, in the specific pair, the first value should be string and the second value should be number. But you can start adding the arrays here like that. So you just need to write one square bracket here like this. And then here you have to start giving the arrays in the square bracket. So let's see now the first uh, pair that I'm writing that Naveen, remember following the sequence, Naveen comma 100. Then again, the second pair again, comma separated another square bracket for the Ravi. So let's see Ravi comma 200 here like that. So simple that is string comma number. And then I can add it here like this. Now, if I really want to fetch that console dot a log and then data, and then I'm saying that what is the values available on the zero. So zero is that this guy Naveen and hundred here like this. So let's run it and let's see. So let me compile it. And we will see the equivalent JavaScript code also that how exactly this tuple will be converted into JavaScript code. So you can see that it's actually storing the data like this. Naveen comma 100 and Ravi comma 200. So this is the respective uh, ty uh, type uh, JavaScript code. But remember, this is not a tuple. Tuple is only uh, designed for the TypeScript, not for the JavaScript. But now I'm going to run it with the node. So with the node, you can say that I'm getting the entire Naveen comma 100, the specific pair that I'm getting it from here. So I'm completely getting the array. So let's say I'm saying data zero. And then from this here, can I do it like this? Give me the zeroth value once again. So let's see what is happening here. So let's uh, compile it once again. And uh, node it and then Naveen. So how exactly it is working? First, it will go to the data pick the zeroth element. Zeroth element is representing this particular array. I mean, this particular pair and it's giving me the entire array and out of that array, give me the zeroth value. It means give me Naveen here. Same thing. If I'm writing zero one here, then in that case, it will start giving me hundred here like this. Okay. So let's run it again. And then see hundred we are getting here. So if you really want to fetch the respective individual values, that also you can use it here. But remember one thing, let's do one more time. Let's create one, one more tuple here. Let's see the tuple. This time I'm writing, this is customer tuple and two values that we have added Naveen and hundred. And then I'm writing this with this customer dot push method. Let's see, I'm writing it here. Can we do the push? Can we add another pair like this? So let's try to add one more one pair here. Let's see, for example, let's see again, I'm writing Ravi comma 200. It means I'm trying to add, uh, you know, another pair like this. Okay. So customer dot push Ravi comma 100 maintaining the sequence here. And then I'm printing the customer here. So let's see what is the output it is giving to me. So let's uh, run it again, compile it and then run it. So first I'm compiling it and then with the help of node, I'm running it here. So here, see the sequence matters. So same Ravi and then 200, I can add it. But you must be getting confused that, okay, while declaring it at the time of initialization, the first time I'm declaring it here, here I can give maximum two values. But when I'm adding and pushing the data, one more pair that I'm adding Ravi comma 200, then I'm printing the customer, then it's having the four data. Yes, this is allowed. But at the time of initialization, you can have only and only two values. It depends how many uh, comma separated data types that you have written here. If you have written two, it means you can have only two values. You cannot have more than two values during the initialization or at the time of initialization. After with the push, you can add it more and more data here like this. But if you really want to, in the beginning itself, you really want to maintain multiple pairs, then you can go with this particular approach also like this. So I hope this is clear, the difference between tuple and uh, the array. Generally, tuple, we can use it when we have the data, the specific kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, sequence that we have to maintain in a specific, a specific array or uh, in the form of tuple that we can do it. And then we really want to make sure that, okay, the order also matters. 
like a string comma number or a string comma or anything that you can maintain here like this. For example, let's see uh, some geolocation that I really want to store or some coordinates that I really want to store in the form of X comma Y. In that case, I can use a tuple here. So it depends on the use case to use case. That's all for this video. Thank you so much.